I've been trying to set myself one goal to achieve every day since I've been self-isolating. The goals mostly revolve around cleaning something and are always quite achievable. I had this grand vision of doing a really big clean of the house during this time, doing one room a day. But after I cleaned the bathroom and the laundry and then half of the kitchen, I just sort of lost steam. The problem with the kitchen is that it's never really done. There's always dishes or something to wipe up. I wasn't quite sure how deep I should be going. Do I empty all the cupboards and drawers and wipe down those surfaces or just do a general clean? I've half-heartedly decided to do a deep clean and I'm cleaning the fridge today, but I'm absolutely dreading the idea of cleaning out the pantry, so maybe I'll skip over that. My other goal for today is that I'm going to go pick up my car from the smash repair shop. A few weeks ago, just as the toilet paper panic was beginning, someone backed into my car at the supermarket and put a decent gash into the bumper and cracked my tail light. I have a bit of damage to the front of my car already, which broke my heart because it happened not long after I bought it brand new, and I just never got it repaired because I've never had the money to be able to justify something that's purely aesthetic. But the cracked tail light worried me, so I called up the insurance and arranged to get it fixed. The person who did it didn't leave a note, so I'm out of pocket $650 for that, but whatever. There's just too much else going on for me to care about that anymore. At least I know it'll be fixed, and it'll be fixed properly, and maybe one day down the line I'll get that other damage repaired too. So my friend Cody's coming to pick me up this afternoon to drive me to the place in exchange for a thousand piece puzzle that I no longer want, but she desperately wants. I debated for ages how I should get to the smash repair place. When I dropped off the car initially, I walked back and it was okay. It took about 40 minutes and wasn't overly strenuous, though I did feel a bit self-conscious because not many people in Toowoomba seem to walk around and there aren't many footpaths here. So my options to pick up the car were walking, pros, free, no exposure to other people, cons, time consuming, looking unfit when I get to the place, and general worry about being stopped by the cops for walking outside my neighborhood, so I'm not really sure how legitimate that worry is. Taking the bus. Pros. Cheap. Cons. Doesn't actually take me where I need to go, so I'd still have to walk at least another 20 minutes. Greater exposure to the general public. Or taxi slash Uber. Pros. Fast. Efficient. Supporting a local worker during hard times. Cons. Expensive-ish, close exposure to another person who has maybe already been exposed to a lot of other people. I hadn't even considered asking a friend to take me, but when Cody offered, I felt like it was a good time to accept the help. I feel a little guilty because even though the current laws make a legal outing, it still feels a little bit wrong. You, April 7th, 2020. Dear you, I wake up just before the alarm goes off. Since isolation began, I've been setting the alarm for 6.30 and heading straight out to the park for an early morning workout. I take my weights and big elastic band and ride down to the local footy oval. Mixing it up every second day with the Coburg Lake. I soon find myself falling down a pretty deep Rashad Roland Kirk wormhole as I lift my weights in the park. Starting with the inflated tier live in Prague 1967 featuring Rashad Roland Kirk on reeds, Ron Burton on piano, Stephen Novosel on bass, Jimmy Hops on drums. This leads to a Rashad Roland Kirk meets Ed Sullivan in 1969 with an all-star lineup including Archie Shep, Roy Haynes and Charles Mingus. Archie Shep is in fine form and this leads me to the epic Rashad Roland Kirk quintet performance of Volunteered Slavery recorded at Grand Palais Paris, France on March the 8th, 1972 featuring Rashad Roland Kirk, tenor sax, Manzello, Stritch, clarinet, castanets, vocals, various flutes and whistles, Ron Burton piano, 
Henry Pearson bass, Richie Goldberg drums, Joe Texidor percussion. I return home and jump in the shower, shave my head and then eat some eggs and then plant myself on the couch. Look at the internet for a while and then curl up with my copy of Straight Life by Art and Laurie Pepper. I'm up to page 100 and Art has just discovered heroin. After the first 90 pages being completely miserable, things have incredibly just gone further downhill. I work on some writing for a while and it flows so I'm happy. And then Tilda wants to pick up a piece of wood so she can work on a puzzle. So we head out into the world and find one. When we get back, Ella's working hard in the kitchen on a bake swap she is holding with her friends today where they all make something and then they leave it on each other's front porches. She's making red velvet whoopies and we go out for an afternoon ride and leave the treats on people's houses. Back at home, I browse the internet trying to find jazz autobiographies that I may want to order to get me through and I come across Art, Why I Stuck with a Junky Jazz Man by Laurie Pepper. Lullaby of Birdland by George Shearing, Coltrane, The Story of a Sound by Ben Ratliff, The Life and Times of an American Original by Robin Kelly, Saxophone Colossus, A Portrait of Sonny Rollins by Bob Blumenthal. And then I pull out my saxophone and work through the circle of fifths. I focus on tone and I like what I hear. Tiller puts on The Simpsons followed by some kind of interior design reality show on Netflix. She writes a letter to Pops and Gloria makes cannelloni for dinner. Ella and Tilda go and make, go and take some baths after I disappear upstairs and work on some dominant seventh exercises. I try and focus on chord structure and just slowly try to figure out the notes involved in putting together a C7, F7, B flat 7th, E flat 7th, A flat 7th, D flat 7th, G flat 7th, B7, E7, A7, D7, G7, C7, F. It's nice to have so much time to just slowly try and think things through. I think I need the time I need to move slowly. It starts to make sense. It starts to make sense. I can see the notes. And then we watch M with an E. And I put together a few zines. And then read Ella and Tilda a few pages of the Jungle Book. Where they're re when they're ready to go to bed. And Mowgli has gone to live with the people. I head downstairs and read a bit more of Straight Life. But I find my mind is wandering. Wondering and wondering what exactly I'm achieving during these days in isolation. But then I hope I haven't spread the virus today. I did some writing for three different scenes, listened to some fine jazz, worked on my circle of fifths, and then just before I go to bed, I find out that my band has been played on PBS. So I go and have a listen and decide that just maybe I'm doing okay. And I'm going to try and hang on in there in this crazy world. I'll speak to you again soon from Luke. Seventh of April in Catford. Small Zine Volcano presents April 7th, 2020. All right, I'm feeling excited to get stuck into this challenge and the challenges it may present. I also kind of work to the format of my usual zine, but in a different layer and more space to fill. Will I ever reach out in Melbourne? I'm writing this under lockdown in London at home in Catford during the ever-rising peak of the coronavirus pandemic and things are pretty fucking weird. Boris Johnson is in intensive care, allegedly not on a ventilator. I say allegedly as the whole way the government has approached the Prime Minister being ill with Covid-19 has been to try and downplay it. 
He's fine, he's only got mild symptoms. He's still working at home, zooming with other world leaders. He's still totally fine and not looking increasingly haunted and unwell every time a picture of him is released. He's not going to hospital, that's just a rumour. Well, okay, he is in hospital, but it's just a precaution. He's totally fine. Oh, actually, now he's in intensive care, which might not sound like he's totally fine at all, but he's not on a ventilator yet. I think Boris Johnson is a racist, Islamophobic, xenophobic, nihilistic, immoral, reckless and power-hungry maniac who doesn't actually believe in anything beyond being in power and doesn't give a shit about anything other than his own ego, but it's still pretty unsettling for the Prime Minister, a person ostensibly in charge of everything, having handled the pandemic so incompetently that they themselves are now critically ill in hospital and at the mercy of the very National Health Service that they've been stealthily trying to sell off. It's like the news keeps trying to top itself, to try and make you go, I can't believe it, we're living through strange times. I mean, the whole COVID-19 situation makes Brexit, something which has completely dominated the British news cycle for the past four years, look like a parochial council arguing about bins or something. It's weird and disturbing, and I imagine everyone in the country is feeling as off-kilter as I am. I've got the window open and outside a woman is walking back and forth in front of my window having an intense conversation. Well, at least he's off the ventilator now. I just don't know what's going to happen. We're just going to have to wait and see, but Jackie said. Or at least, I hope it's just one woman and not loads of different women all in different intense conversations. Hence the Richie Havens. It's about the most soothing music choice I could think of. On the plus side, it's another beautiful day, which is better for the psyche than it being grey and rainy, I think. Although that might mean more people actually stay at home. The sun is shining, Rich is strumming his amazing thumb chords through the speakers, and I've got a zine to write. Welcome to the Plastic Knife Zine Reading for Small Zine Volcano Presents April the 7th, 2020. A typical Tuesday. It was a typical Tuesday with the looting of everything of value, knocking over of altars, desecrating of the tombs of the saints, and slaughtering the monks and the students. Stream. I was sentenced to be drowned in a filthy stream so shallow I had to be held down in it. Anticlimactic. The simple drowning struck some as anticlimactic. After. After stealing all the silver they destroyed the town, massacred almost the entire population and then carried off the survivors. Lust. The lust for huge amounts of gold and silver. Castles. But castles are useless without fighting men to defend them. Mid-afternoon. By mid-afternoon the entertainment of battles between men and wild beasts had concluded. Peter Dutton. Accursed and headstrong, extremely cruel and harsh. Destructive, troublesome, wild, ferocious, infamous, Destructive and inconstant, brash, conceited and lawless, death-dealing, rude, everywhere on guard, a rebellious traitor, 
and kindler of evil, a double-faced hypocrite, an ungodly, arrogant, seductive, and foolhardly, foolhardy deceiver, a lewd, unbridled, contentious rascal, a cruel, blasphemous monster who mocked God and the saints in their own sanctuaries. Thank you for coming to the Plastic Knife Scene Reading. creator of the free zine uh, Hey Jupiter and which is distributed by a small zine volcano and I also contributed seven pages to this wonderful massive split zine uh, small zine volcano presents 7th of April 2020 um, thanks so much to Luke and uh, yeah small zine volcano for putting this together it's a really really wonderful zine and I'm very proud to be a part of it um, so yeah I'm gonna do some reading from uh, the first part of my zine which is mostly text um, and uh, yeah I thought I'd try something a little different so I'm gonna I'm gonna um, be cross stitching while I read which uh, will make sense <laughs> if I uh, you get to a certain part of the zine. I, I figured I'd just, because uh, I want to make a little thing while, while I'm doing this, I figured I would just go, i just read until until the thing is finished. Um, yeah, it's just a little bit of an experiment. We'll see how it goes. Okay. So, 7th of April, 2020. I have started getting back into heavy metal. You would think it might be a response to the current situation, but I actually started before that. Me and Giselle and Jess bought tickets to Download Festival, mostly because My Chemical Romance was headlining. But there is another band uh, on the lineup that I had been super into when I was uh, younger, a Italian metal band called Lacuna Coil. Um, I had discovered them because someone on LimeWire had listed one of their songs as an Evanescence song. <laughs> And uh, I prided myself at the time on knowing all Eminence's tracks that had ever been released, including <laughs> B-sides and rare tracks. Uh, it only took me a couple of listens to realise that it was not Amy Lee's voice on the uh, song, but I really liked the song anyway. Um, the song is called Circle, and I still really like it. In fact, uh, while I was going back and listening to a bunch of Lacuna Coil songs in, re in preparation for download, um, I realized that there were still quite a lot of songs that I really liked, um, including some of the new ones that I hadn't really heard after kind of giving them up as a teenager. Right. Um, so yeah, there was a certain earnestness to the songs that, uh, and to a lot of songs by bands that I listened to at the time that I, uh, uh, emo bands and also like, um, bands like Within Temptation and, uh, Nightwish, which I have recently learned is, uh, a certain kind of metal called symphonic metal, which makes sense, um, given that they use a lot of symphonies and a lot of like, string instruments and, and kind of opera style vocals, particularly Nightwish. Not not so much now, but um, back in the day. Um, yeah, lots of lots of female-led metal, symphonic metal bands. Um, but I guess I kind of started re to reject them as I got older, uh, in the process of, I suppose, what I decided was growing up and uh, yeah, in favour of, I guess, deeper, <laughs> more uh, Indian and, I guess, esoteric music. Um, so I've spoken to a few friends about this, and uh, it's funny to see how many of them kind of made the transition to, uh, from like pop punk and, and, and emo, and kind of 
metal type stuff to these kind of indie bands and, and, and musicians. Bands like Bright Eyes or like The National. A friend who's really into the Decemberists. <laughs> um, and yeah, I kind of do this too. Ooh. Messed that bit up. Sorry, I'll keep going. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what it happened, but uh, at some point, uh, a nine minute song called Ghost Love Score was all of a sudden not uh, very cool. It was actually deeply uncool <laughs> to me. Um, it's funny because a lot of these indie bands, like the emotion that you get from them is just as intense as like, say an emo or a metal band. But, um, like if you listen to Bright Eyes, like Connor Oberst's voice, like literally shakes when you listen to it. But I guess his lyrics are a lot more, I don't know, esoteric and I don't know, I liken it to like the way that I turned away from like sci-fi and and fantasy books in order to like read real literature which is you know not a thing but I've learned I've learned since then <laughs> um yeah I think maybe it's it's perhaps lack of the lack of uh fantasy imagery that um made me gravitate towards them I don't know I'm still teasing this thought out uh but I uh yeah, can definitely see a parallel. Oh, I lost my end. That's all right. I'll keep going. Anyway, I've been having a great time revisiting some of these bands that I've listened to. I'm going to change my thread. Uh, and I kind of wanted to test myself to see if I enjoyed the music. Or if it was just like feelings of nostalgia that I was feeling for this, this type of music. Um... I also wanted to try out some new or like, you know, up and coming bands as opposed to just listening to the same like five Scandinavian metal bands that I used to listen to when I was a kid. Um, yeah, I wasn't really sure where to start though and so it kind of, like the whole thing seemed very overwhelming so I kind of just let it sit in the back of my mind for a while. Um, and then I... Uh, yeah, I'm not even sure when I saw it. I think it must have been like on a social media post or something. But um, uh, I saw that Mia Timpano was hosting a regular heavy metal show on uh, Triple R called Requiem for a Scream, which is a great name. Um, and yeah, it's kind of freaky because... Uh, it started like the start of this year, which was like around pretty much around the time that I started like thinking about this stuff and, and going back to listen to this music. So it almost felt kind of like it's obviously not fate or anything, but it kind of felt fateful in that way. Um, yeah. Ooh, skip the page. So yeah, it's pretty much exactly what I was looking for. So I've been going back and uh, listening to um, all of the broadcasts online and yeah I have to say it's so really it's just it's just so nice to have uh, listen to a woman talking about metal um, and kind of guiding me through new stuff and stuff that that she's into and that she's found I guess another thing that kind of I struggled with or kind of made me I guess turn away from from it a little bit is just like having to deal with all of this you know these feelings of like not being like into heavy enough music or like a true fan by all of these like you know metal bros <laughs> or like yeah the largely kind of male fan base that I was interacting with when I was a teenager um yeah and just being like ashamed of of you know, the kind of music that I like, like, you know, symphonic metal in particular and, like, female-led metal bands. Some people kind of consider that to be, like, girl metal or, like, metal light, which I think is stupid. And it is stupid. It's just, yeah. We've all grown up since then, hopefully. <laughs> anyway, uh, so the show airs tonight, as of the 7th of April, <laughs> and every Tuesday night from... 
10 p.m. to 12 a.m. And yeah, I'm going to make an effort to listen to the show live uh, and make a playlist of the songs that I like here. So some of the songs that I put on this playlist include a song called <laughs> Drag to the Woodpile by uh, Bullgum. Uh, we've got a song by Fantasus, I think that's how you say it, Enter Into the Astral Plane. Um, and then there's also a song by Mono, which I really love, still called Meet Us Where the Night Ends. This was the first time I listened to Windrunner, which is really exciting because they're now one of my favourites. I love them, they're a really excellent Vietnamese metal band with a female singer, extremely good. Um, there's a band called Frozen Moon, which is a Chinese band, they're really cool, and that's called Fond Dream, and then we've got Violet Cold as well, which, uh, a song called She Spoke of Her Devastation. See, it's so extra, but I really, I, I really like it. Well, that worked out really well, because I'm finished my <laughs> cross stitch. It's really janky because I was trying to read and stitch and kind of look at the camera at the same time, but ta-da! It's a little volcano! <laughs> Yay! That was, pretty, that was pretty cool. Okay, so yeah, thanks Luke again and everyone for watching. Um, and yeah, I check out the zine. There's so much cool stuff in there. Um, and yeah, I hope you're keeping safe and well. Okay.